This is the Omega Radio.co.uk. Samiasa Omega. You know you are the leader. Omega, you're the thinking people station. Peace, peace, family. In this video right here, I'm about to go in. Now, why am I going in? Because number one, the number one reason I'm going in is off the premise of everyone does not know what they're talking about. And when you present them uh, information, they like to throw age out there, either trying to say I'm too young or try to say because they've climaxed to so many years in their life that they know what they're talking about. So what I'm about to do is I'm about to go one by one through all the community organizations from the 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s and up to this day and show you how they were all consciously or unconsciously teaching Freemasonic and Jewish Illuminati uh, understandings and knowledge straight out of the secret Masonic temples. The majority of the leaders were Masons and the followers of these organizations were either conscious, consciously or unconsciously following knowledge that they thought to be right but was actually incorrect. We finna go down the, up the line and I'm finna blast on everything on how all of this information was given to you by Jewish Illuminati members and secret society members who are part of Freemasonry and how the majority, 80% of the information that we have today and that we have been using in the black community for about the last 30 to 40 years is all incorrect and was all given to us by the European and that is why all of these organizations have been allowed to stand and have not been destroyed because they've been teaching and hindering us with they should for the last 30 couple of years and now we're going to show and prove that can't nobody prove what the fuck they teaching because it was given to them by the European and they themselves have not self-validated so with that being said anybody and everybody who's out here a part of what you call the conscious community and is subscribed to some form of organization, whether it be Hebrew, Moore, Christian, uh, you subscribe to uh, the evolution theory, Anarasqua, and um, a Nuwapic, the Nuwapian doctrine, how you are subscribed to information that you cannot never prove to nobody or yourself, and that information was generated by a European who's a part of a secret society and given to the leader of the establishment of your organization. Now, with that being said, let's begin. First, we're going to start with the Amin Rasqua. Now, we're going to kill the head. We're not going for the bodies. We're going for the heads. First of all, we're gonna, I'm going I'm to blast Dr. Maya, then I'm going to blast Unk. Now, Dr. Maya, here's, here's Dr. Maya. Let me show y'all a picture real quick. Okay, family, y'all see Dr. Maya? Now, Dr. Maya is not a real doctor. Dr. Maya only has a certificate, a doctrinal degree in electrical engineering, okay? So the only thing Dr. Mayat should be talking about is helping you cut your lights on in your house. There's no way with that degree, Dr. Mayat is qualified, according to European uh, scholarly credentials, to be speaking on Egyptology in any type of way or to be speaking on science in any type of way. Now, the only way Dr. Mayat would be able to do this is if she self-educated herself in these areas since she did not get these credentials from a college university. So now this will put her on my playing field. So now what you're saying is I'm too young to have this information but yet the same way I had to obtain it, you had to obtain it, which was through self-education and through self-finding. Same thing for Unk. Unk never graduated either. So all of this scholarship, scholarship, when none of you motherfuckers have any scholarly degrees to prove the scholarship you are talking about. So now let's go on on Dr. Maya. Dr. Maya allows people within the Amin squad to teach the Meta Netcha and charge the people for the Meta Netcha, but yet Dr. Maya nor anyone in the Amin squad can themselves prove the origin of transliteration of the Meta Netcha. Now let me go on on the Meta Netcha in order and connect this to the Illuminati. If you study Egyptology, you'll see that there was a time in history during the 1800s called Egypt Mania. When Europeans, this was literally like a, they try to say it was a mental disorder. Where Europeans were so fascinated with what they saw in Egypt and in Africa, they just started taking it, which they call excavations. So now in order to justify these excavations, what the Europeans did, specifically Amelia Edwards and Reginald Poole, was they created the Egyptian Exploration Society, a.k.a. Egyptology. So now Egyptology is just a legalized organization which allowed them to extract artifacts from Africa, particularly Egypt, in the name of an intellectual and scholarly premise, when it actually was just burglary, 
and grave robbing. So now why is this important? Amelia Edwards' father was a rich banker who's a part of the secret societies that we know to exist today. And this is where she got her money from. Amelia Edwards had no college or scholarly credentials at all. Neither did Reginald Poole. So they based their credentials along the alleged translator of the Egyptian hieroglyphics, a.k.a. Medinetia, named John Chaplin. Now John Chaplin, in 1822, supposedly deciphered the Medinetia, standing upon the works of Thomas Young and Harapalo. Now Thomas Young is who started to try to decipher the hieroglyphics before John Chaplin. And Thomas Young stands on the shoulders of who I just named as well, Harapalo. Who is Harapalo? Harapalo was a Greek who allegedly wrote two books comprised of 189 different descriptions on how to translate the Metanetra through Greek text and Demotic text. And Harapalo allegedly got this information from Philippus. Now why is this important? Philippus is not documented or known to have existed at all. So before I go in on how the, tr how the translation never happened, first we got to understand that when you're dealing with the white man and the Illuminati in their lives, they have publicly infiltrated all subjects of information and given you it should be. And you can always point out the it should because there's always a missing link. Believe in the Bible because Jesus said Jesus is the missing link because he's the only one we can't find or prove to have exist. Evolution theory. Oh, we come from monkeys, which I'm going to be going, on, going in on that in a minute too. Okay, where's the monkey? Where's the common ancestor? Oh, we can't find them. We, we just we just assume it. Missing link. Now, Medinet is translated. Okay, says who? The Illuminati Jews who founded the Egyptology Society. Okay, who was it translated by? Philippus. Where is he? I don't know. Missing link exists. So we know that when the white man creates a link of lie, it's always founded upon some issue that can't never be factually proven. Now let's break down how the Metanetra could have never been factually proven and how the Amaraskwa is falsely propagating the teachings of the Metanetra and charging people for issues that they cannot prove themselves. If they can prove themselves, please do a step-by-step -step video showing us how it was translated. Now, the Metanetra as I broke down in my Egyptian hieroglyphics video, was allegedly translated through what's called the Rosetta Stone. The Rosetta Stone was created in 196 BC by a European named Ptolemy V. Now it is documented in the book, the Rosetta Stone, that none of the Ptolemies knew how to speak Egyptian. They actually passed laws that forbid the Egyptian language and any Egyptian spiritual uh, spirituality from being practiced. They actually disdained the language. They looked down upon it as a lesser language and didn't know, allow anyone to speak it. So we could confirm here that nobody was speaking the Egyptian language. And if any, they was being killed or being uh, banished from the land as well as the already the African Egyptians who were already being pushed out of their own land from speaking the language. So we can clearly come to the conclusion that at this point in time the Egyptian language is if not all eradicated, 90% eradicated. So now why is this important? The Egyptian language, which is spoken, is not the hieroglyphics. Now, when you're dealing with the definition of the hieroglyphics, as I just broke down, you can go look it up. It will tell you it's a, what is considered an indecipherable language. So now, not only has the European and the Rosetta Stone admitted that they couldn't speak the language, he also in his book submits that they added in consonants and vowels as well as alphabetic characters for what they did not know and that they made up things in order to complete the findings of the comedic uh, glyphs on the wall. Now, why did they do this? Because when the Illuminati Jews and the Europeans were stealing all of these artifacts, because if you do your research, 85% of all artifacts around the world come from Africa, and Egypt has the most artifacts in all museums, so we know that the European was pillaging Egypt, and we can conclude this through statistics. We know that when people got to saying, okay, what does this mean, white man? You got this big ass wall in this museum with all this writing on it. What does it mean? The European had to create something in order to explain what he took because it wasn't his. So instead of making it look like thievery or burglary, which it was, he made it look like it was intellect and that he was in Egypt for scholarly reasons instead of the reasons he really was, which was burglarization. So... The Metanetra has never been deciphered, and I want y'all to know the Egyptology Society, aka the Egyptian Exploration Society, is predicated upon the Rothschilds, which is a secret, which is a family that's a part of the Illuminati, okay, a Jewish family, and they created this society in order to give themselves an excuse to go in there and rob Egypt, and they created a fictitious language in order to help justify and say that they were studying the artifacts 
so that they can have an excuse for people as people gain as people began to gain notice on them in their museums and ask them what was the meaning of shit that they had they didn't know the meaning to because they stole it. So now let's go into the meta nature. There are over two thousand character glyphs in the meta nature. Now the Dometic text is what they say was used to translate the meta nature. Now the Dometic text only has twenty nine characters. Now let's do the math, right? Because Dr. Maya says she's a mathematician. 14 out of 29 gives us a 45 to 50% ratio. So that means 14 out of 29 of the Dometic text was incorrect. And since the Dometic text was used to allegedly translate the hieroglyphics, that means anything translated or transliterated from the Egyptian hieroglyphics is 45 to 50% incorrect. So now why is this important? That means even if they did successfully translate the meta nature, 45 to 50% of it is wrong. So you're still not teaching people how to speak Egyptian. Now for two, why can't you speak Egyptian? Because the Egyptian hieroglyphics were not sounds. They were not words. They were not phrases. It was not a language. They were ideograms, which were ideas or mental uh, depictive, mentally um, depict, I mean mental, I mean mental depictions, which convey ideas through imagery. That's it. So how did you take an idea and turn it into a letter? Now let's go into the science behind this. Okay. When Amiga, they you're the put thinking people the meta nature, allegedly through the Dometic text, even if you used 29 correct characters, you still have to account for 1,972 other Egyptian characters and how they were translated. I'll say this again. There are over 2,000 characters in the Egyptian language or um, hierographical language. So now, if you use the Dometic text to translate the meta nature, Okay, which they said, that's what Egyptologists are saying, that that was used on the Rosetta Stone. Even if all 29 of those were correct, you still have to show me, because 2,000 minus 29 leaves us with 1,972. So you still have to account for 1,972 other characters. So if you did successfully translate this, why do you not have 2,000 characters with a significant meaning for every alleged hieroglyphic that you transferred, for one, and for two, if you didn't need it, show me how 29 characters possessed a, substa possessed a substantiated meaning on 2,000 glyphs. I want to see this done. So don't just tell me that the meta nature was translated. Show me. Show me how you translated 2,000 glyphical meanings through only 29 letters to which 50% of that was wrong. Show me how the f*** they did that. You can't do that. You cannot do that. And if you need more of an understanding on this without me staying on this topic too long, family, go watch my video titled Egyptian Hieroglyphics. And I go into the details and I give the names. So with that being said, you can't turn an idea into a letter. And if so, why does the letter still not possess the meaning that it once had when it was an idea? And then for two, there's 2,000 alleged characters in Egyptian hieroglyphics. How did you translate 2,000 characters with only 29 letters? And out of the 29 letters, 14 is wrong. How is this being done? So now, I'm going to be going into the linguistics of this in a minute. But, just to show y'all, this right here, family. Is Grimm's Law a study? Now, this is considered one of the top five uh, books which will teach you on the origins of linguistic. You clearly see it says scholar's choice. So, this right here is certified by what you call scholars. So, not only do I got a, cer a certified book by scholars, I have the linguistics for dummies. So, now, in both of those books, what I want y'all to know is, out of all the goddamn origins of all the letters and the phonetic sounds, that book never, one nigga of the time, shows you how the Egyptian hieroglyphics was translated off the wall into grammatical text to produce a sound. You know why? Because they never did it. So even in the linguistics book, which is certified and, um, what you gonna call it, um, approved by scholars, never one time in this book do they show you where any of the origins come from the comedic words. They never show you how the word, how Haru became Haru. The ancestors didn't say hawk. The ancestors didn't say Ra. So where did you get the letter R off the picture of a son? For example, as I had to inform Dr. Reggie, Dr. Reggie made a comment saying the Greeks helped translate the Egyptian names of the pharaohs. And when I asked him, 
Was he, would he concur that they helped translate the name of the Pharaoh Ramses, which was a set of question, he ignorantly sublimed. It said correct. That's incorrect because the title Ramses wasn't even created until the 1800s after the alleged establishment and findings of the Jewish Illuminati Egyptology Society. So the word Ramses is not even in, in any Bible that's before the 1800s. So how the hell could the Greeks have translated his name? Now for lastly, we want to go to Cleopatra, which I heard said he say the only name they ever successfully translated was Cleopatra. So with this being true, Cleopatra is only eight letters, which means even if that was true, you only know factually eight letters, which will only translate into eight glyphs. There's 2,000 glyphs approximately. So now you still have to account for 1,992 glyphs that you don't know. And if you came to know them, tell me how. Because it's not in no linguistic book. It's not um. It's not in the Demetic text, it's not in the Coptic text, and it's not in the Heretic text. And don't say that either of those texts, the Heretic text or Coptic text was used, because those are hybrid texts predicated off of the Demotic text, being that they took alphabetical characters from the Demotic text to create themselves, and I just told you the Demotic text is 45 to 50% wrong. So none of these European created texts during the Greco-Roman area and Jewish area of, the inhabit of them inhabiting and conquering Egypt at this time can be validly used to say that they that they translated the meta nature period so now with that being said it's incorrect for somebody to try to allow um an associate of theirs to teach somebody something that they themselves cannot factually prove what makes you different from a christian what makes you different from a muslim what makes you different from a hebrew what makes you different from any religious sector or organization which tells people to believe in something because the white man told them and they, they can't prove it to themselves. All they got to go off is the alleged names of name brand people. You know why the uh, Christians think that Christianity is real? Oh, because the Pope said it. He's name brand. He's important. Guess what he is? An Illuminati Jew. You know why people think they could translate the Meta Netcha? Oh, because Egyptologists and scholars said they translated the Meta Netcha. Guess what they are? An Illuminati Jew. And guess who created Christianity? And guess who created this Egyptology society? Illuminati Jews. So now you have someone in a black community propagating information, which is false, to people that was given to them by Illuminati and secret society Freemasonic members. Europeans. Okay? So... We're going to come back to that, but we just want to, want to let people know we don't give a f up about no name brand. We want to see the sh through step by step how it was done. For you to just tell somebody this is what it sounds like because somebody said so and not be able to prove it is incorrect. That's not scholarly and that's not right. So now we'll be coming back to that in a minute, but we had to start it off with Dr. Mayak because I want to show y'all how not only... Can Dr. Mayat not prove this? Dr. Mayat is not even a doctor and has no doctorly certificates in any of the areas that I just proved. And the next I'm going to be going in on the evolution theory because this is also something that the Amara Squad teaches, which Dr. Mayat is a leader in. And she also has no uh, doctoral certificates in the area of evolution. She's an electrical engineer. So what are you talking about? The origins of Egyptian hieroglyphics and the origins of genetic humanoid existence and you have no certified certi certification in these areas. You have to homeschool yourself just like everybody else does, but yet you're flaunting false certi certification in these areas that you don't have. So now we're going to bust down the evolution theory, but we're going to go to Brother Unk now for this because this is, his, uh, this is what he's pumping and this is what he's kicking. So with that being said, let me introduce y'all to Brother Um. Man, it's right about this area. I'm not dealing with that. It's a, so when we deal it, I just want you to show me where's this evolutionary Lucy thing on the comedic wall. When did he say that we came from the Too easy. Because see, first of all, you messed up. You said Kemet. What is it on the Kemet walls? Well, we deal with Africa. So I'm going to go to the oldest Africans on the earth, which is in the south. Did John Henry Clark not say that we came from the south, said he? That's true. That's that is true. So the oldest Africans that come from the south is the Sinotians, right? So they have a cosmological system, right? And in their story, it says that they came from big, hairy beast. Is that not evolution? Is that not the evolutionary model? 
Now, 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 hold on, hold on. Don't let me finish. Don't let me finish. Don't let me finish. Let me finish. So, so, big hairy beast, big hairy beast. What is a, what is a monkey to you? Is that not a beast? Is that not a big hairy beast? So let me make my point. So let me make my point. So my point is, so my point is, so my point is, evolution is not a non-African concept. Because we already told you beast, which is an animal, which means we can come from animals. That's an African, I'm not done. In the Dogon cosmological system, evolution, they have a grass phase, they have an animal phase, they have a star phase, they have all these different phases. So. Again, people coming from animals in the Dogons as well as in the South. So this is not a non-African concept. This is not a non-African concept. Now, I'm not saying it's not a metaphor in these complex systems. But what I'm saying is Charles Darwin rediscovers evolution. Hold up. Hold up. Oh, Charles Darwin did not invent evolution. He rediscovers evolution from the African mind. And until you study evolution and know what it really is, you won't know what you're talking about. Come here, brother. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold up, brother. Come back. Hold on. I ain't said that. Let me just get one, one. I just want one question to build on. In Egyptian literature, right, is, is, the ancestor, they call him the, the great ancestor, the baboon in Egypt. Anybody want to challenge that? Why the hell are you lying? Why you always lying? Mm, oh my God. Stop doing so blind. Okay, family. Now that bald head brother that y'all just seen at the end, talking about the baboon, is on. Now you clearly heard the other brother in the video say, is that not a big hairy monkey? So when y'all keep saying, who... Who? The Amara Squad never said we come from monkeys. Yes, the fuck they are teaching our people that we come from monkeys. And with that being said, family, now we're going to go into why this is biologically detrimental and why this is psychologically detrimental to the black community. And the, and the point I want to make with the evolution theory is how I'm going to show and prove how black people in the, in the black community, in the so-called conscious community, are upholding the racist, European, self-hate, teachings of the white man in the black community. Now, let me break this down, family. Brother Unk said the ancestors considered uh, Bobby, the baboon, the great ancestor. Now, let me throw this picture up of the God Canoom real quick for y'all. Okay, family. Now, you can clearly see Canoom is molding man on a potter's wheel out of clay. Now, this shows you that the ancestors did not psychologically perceive themselves as coming from monkeys. So you come in the name of the Amen Ra squad, but yet you teach the exact opposite of the Amen Ra craft. So now this right here automatically raises a red flag. Now when we're dealing with the God Kanum, and you say, Pharaoh, why did the your why did the ancestors use the ideogram or, or Egyptian hieroglyphic glyph of a man being molded from clay? Because clay is a, has a high concentration of carbon. And we know that carbon-12 makes up 99.9% .9 of all things in the cosmos. The ancestors understood themselves to, come to, to, to be manifestations of the creator of the cosmos. So if you go watch my video, Black Symbiotic Body, I break this down exactly, point for point, how black people, how our flesh is literally the DNA of the solar system. So with that being said... Your body, you get your body from your planets and you get your soul from the sun. So now with that being said, we can clearly see the ancestors did not psychologically identify themselves with uh, coming from monkeys. So that's ill, that's ill number one. So for one, you just lied on the ancestors. So we got the them out here uh, creating agendas to fit themselves in the Europeans' agenda. So now, when we want to go into the false uphold um, teachings of... The, the Illuminati Jew, which has been passed down to, to, to so-called leaders in the black community to, as pillars to uphold a lie. Let's go into the evolution uh, theory genetically. First, we want to go into the common sense of the evolution theory. It has been proven by the Australian Research Center for Ancient DNA that the European gene is only 6,000 years old. With this being a genetic fact, there's no way anybody could have been anywhere cold evolving 30,000, 20,000 years ago because they didn't exist They're only 6,000 years ago. So now you have to, now we understand that the timeline, the time frame is a lie. Now let's go into genetics. First of all, I'm going to play in a minute 
a video of a European emitting he's a hybrid Neanderthal. The only the only way you can come up with a hybrid is through genetic splicing. And the Neanderthal DNA is primate or monkey DNA. Now we know one thing for sure. Humans and monkeys cannot procreate together. So now when they say, okay, we're dealing with scholarship, let's go to scholarship. Let's deal with genetics. We know a gene is broke down in five parts, five units, which they may not know this, but I'll teach them now. The operon unit, the Christon unit, the muton unit, the recon unit, and the replicon unit. The Christon unit is where most of the genetic information in the gene is housed. The operon unit is the center of all operative uh of all operations and all the ways a gene can function and conduct itself. The mutine unit is the only unit of a gene that can be mutated. A recon unit is the only unit of a gene that can be reconstructed and the replicon unit is the only unit of a gene that you can replicate or clone. So now, the, each of these units only take up 20% of space on a gene. Now why is this important? The only way Neanderthal DNA will be able to bind with the gene is if it came through the recon unit, which is the only unit of a gene that can actually be reconstructed. So now with that being said, um, when you're dealing with the recon unit of a gene, naturally the amino acids of animals and humans will never bind. So the only way you can actually bind DNA is through a process called electric shock or electric fusion, which is what they're using to clone people what they're using to create GMO foods, and what, you, what they're using to create hybrid animals. So now why is this important? The only way the European could have inhabited or obtained animal genes is through genetic splicing or what they call the process of electric fusion, which I break down step by step. Now why is this important? There is no way in hell that you can prove that a monkey evolved into a man for these reasons. For one, how did the monkey obtain... I mean, how did the monkey give us glands, organs, and genetic material that it itself never had? For example, the monkey has pheomelanin. It does not have neuromelanin. And it doesn't have a pineal gland, and it doesn't have a reptilian part of the brain. Yet, black people do. So how do we acquire these things from the monkey? Also, next question. There's no monkeys in the cold. So, why, do, why is this important? Reese's monkey blood. Europeans introduced the A and B antibodies into the bloodstream of Africans. Before we sexually encounter Europeans, we were all negative blood types. So now you have to show me how did someone e migrate to where it's cold at and obtain rhesus monkey blood. The rhesus monkey blood is native to the continent of Asia. Monkeys were on Asian on the continent of Asia and Africa, not Alaska or any of these cold regions that you're trying to say people migrated. So how did they become infected? And how did their bloodstream become infected by the blood of an animal that's literally on two other continents from where the fuck they at? So how did that happen? So you have to explain this. How do we get a reptilian brain? Uh, how do how do we develop a reptilian composition of our brain from a monkey that's a mammal, which is a monk? I mean, from a monkey, yes, that's what you, that that is a mammal. And has no reptilian brain. How did it give us one? How did we get a pineal gland from a monkey that, that doesn't have it? How did black people get liquid in the third ventricle of their brain from a monkey that doesn't have it? Also, how are black people still 100% human being and white people are only 96% human being and 4% Neanderthal if monkeys evolved into black people and then black people went to the cold and turned into white people? How did black people lose 4% of their DNA? So now, how else do we prove a uh, hybrid? That white people are hybrid. I got my Moorish paperwork back, and they sent my money back. Uh, as you can see right here, they sent my money back, and they said, uh, It is with great disappointment that I must return your writs to you for the following reasons. It has come to our attention that you are of European descent. This proclaiming of nationality is for the Moors of blah, 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 blah. In other words, I'm not black so they won't help me help me they won't process my paperwork and that's actually total bitch looked I mean there's plenty of uh, white people that claim Moorish nationality and besides I'm a Neanderthal hybrid which means that I'm indigenous to thought let me throw up the definition real quick Okay, family, y'all see the definition? 
Now, with that being said, you see it says in there, donkeys, mules. Now we have to go to Himalayan disease. Only genetically engineered animals or genetically spliced animals try to kill their own offspring during pregnancy. Who's the only person on the planet who infected our bloodstream and now when we become impregnated by them, our body tries to kill the offspring? The European. When an Irish negative mother has a baby by an Irish positive white man and an Irish mother is black, she goes through what you call hemolytic disease. Now, any mother who had to get the Rogaine shot knows what hemolytic disease is. It's when your immune system sends red blood cells over the placenta, through the placenta, to, your, to the baby that you impregnated with in order to destroy the baby because the body identifies it as a foreign species. Why? Because of the Neanderthal genes, the monkey genes inside of the black human god body. So the god body identifies that it has a monkey body inside of it and tries to kill it. So now, why is it important? Only animals that are genetically spliced suffer from this disease. Nothing that's natural tries to kill its own offspring for identifying it as a, as a foreign species. So now you have to show me how did the European acquire the genetic material of a foreign species naturally. When, if this was true, when Europeans were in the Caucasus Mountains, they would have all died because they wouldn't have been able to produce any babies because all of their bodies would have just murdered the babies every time they got pregnant and there wouldn't have been no Europeans in maybe a hundred years. So if Europeans were naturally selected, how did the hemolytic disease allow them to reproduce? You cannot prove this. But now why is this important? Because you're in a community teaching somebody something that was created by secret society members. Charles Darwin and Francis Galton in 1883. Now, guess what else was established in 1883? The Egyptian Exploration Society. So the Amara Squad is predicated and founded in, te in its two most powerful teachings, which is the evolution theory and the translation of the meta nature, was both founded in 1883 by Illuminati secret society members, Europeans, non-Africans, and have been passed down to them, and now they act as a pillar in the black community teaching nation that they could never ever prove and will never ever Amiga, prove and was never ever taught by the African. Station. So they are just like Mr. Smith on the Matrix. Okay? They've been hit with Mr. Smith, which is the European white man, the Illuminati Jew, which is the, the creator of Egyptology and the creator of the evolution theory. Because before 1883, nobody in the history of history has ever said they came from monkeys. Now let me teach you why this is psychologically incorrect and how brothers like Unk and the Amara Squad is upholding racist doctrine of the um, alleged evolution theory. Now, I'm going to show you firsthand the creators of the evolution theory and what their mental premise is on black people using this theory. Watch the video. Not show his face for fear he'd be fired from his job starts to get ready for the evening's rituals. But you're wearing the robes of traditional terrorists, of traditional well, that's haters. Just, that's just the outlook that they want to give you. That ain't true. Not, not everybody was like that. So you think this is what a good Christian man does? Yeah, this is our Christianity. I mean, that's just plain and simple. Howard says he's allowed us to come here to show us the new clan is neither hate-filled nor violent. Yet what we heard and saw during our time with them suggests otherwise. Black people and white people are nowhere related. In my opinion, I think black people evolved from animals. And I believe that we need to be separated. Whites and blacks need to be separated. I don't agree with race mixing. Let them set up their own state where they belong and give them their own homeland. Okay, so you clearly see this Ku Klux Klan member justifies his racism towards us because we come from monkeys. Now remember, I just told y'all, not only was Egyptology created in 1883, so was the evolution theory. Now why is this important? Because we know that in 16, 1863, allegedly, we were freed as slaves. Allegedly. So now this is only 20 years after. So I, don't, I doubt that racism went away 20 years after when we clearly st still see us here today. So now why is this important? Also in the Constitution, it states that black people are three-fifths of a man. This three-fifths of a man is, is justified along the alleged predication of the evolution theory. So white people created the evolution theory in order to justify themselves psychologically to why they mistreat us because they try to equate our physiology and our, bio and our biological origins to monkeys. 
So this is why white people literally treat us like animals because they have literally created a fictitious doctrine which self-hypnotized them to believe that we are nothing more than such. So when a white person get mad at you, what's the first thing they call you? A monkey. This is not by accident. This is not just by racism. This is because this is what the fuck they teach their children. Science is in their house. So now you got white people teaching their kids that black people is monkeys. Now you got these Eurocentric Amin Rashquads teaching black people that we monkeys too. So now they want you to go outside and think that you came from a goddamn monkey. And the white man think you came from a goddamn monkey. And then you can't understand why American society is so negative psychologically and looks down on black people psychologically so high. Because you got white people teaching them to lie that you came from a monkey. And they can't make up prove it. And they justify it with the missing link. Just like they can't prove the translation of the nature. And they justify that with Philip as the missing link. And now you got the Amara squad teaching you both of these European created sciences which can't never be proven because they both founded upon missing links and both are created by Masonic Europeans. So now with that being said, when it comes to the Amara squad, don't nobody know what the fuck they talking about and don't nobody know what they teaching and can't nobody prove it. They just hiding behind European credentials that they don't have. Once again, Dr. Maya is an electrical engineer. She is efficient and dealing with the wiring in your goddamn house, car, and microwave. That's it. She has no scholarly credentials in these fields. And she's self-educated just like everybody else. And she's going off what she believes, not what she knows and can prove. And when it comes to Unk, Unk ass didn't even go to college. Now let me end on this with Unk. Okay, Pharaoh, you say so would a, would a, would a, would a conscious person willingly lie to people? Will someone in the conscious community willingly lie? Hmm, let's see. Unk calls himself the black atheist, right? Which means he doesn't believe in a higher power. He calls himself the black atheist. But yet, Unk is a Prince Hall Mason. Now, why is this important? Because in order to be a Prince Hall Mason, you have to believe in a higher power. So now when you ask me, Pharaoh, will somebody in the conscious community literally lie to people? Oh, yes, they will literally lie to people. If a motherfucker will tell you he's a black atheist, but then he's a part of a secret sect, that in order for him to be an initiate, he has to believe in a higher power. I don't think that he would have a problem sitting here telling you the evolution theory is real, knowing that it's up for and not. He's told you other issues that he know not to be true. So with that being said, let's move on to the next. Let's get into Prince York. And I'm only going at those who went at me, family. So I don't want y'all to think I'm seeking the up for out to tear him down. I'm just letting the know when you come for my neck, I'm putting your lights out. I'm making examples out of everybody. So now we're going now next, we're gonna deal with Prince York and his false ass Nawapic doctrine. And we're gonna deal with Daddy York. Okay? Now let's let me let me introduce y'all to Prince York. Here's a picture of Prince York. Okay. Now, Prince York and the Nawapians. Prince York, leader of the Nawapians, whoever he is. Didn't even know. I didn't even know Malachi York had a son until Prince York popped up on my goddamn phone. So now with that being said, we're going to show him why he should have stayed where he at. Because we're dealing with facts. Prince York predicates everything off of his father's work. Not personal research. Research. So now why is this important? I just told you. In these linguistics books, family, they don't show you at all how they got sounds out of the Egyptian letters. Because they didn't get them out of there. So this is why I'm asking somebody to show me how the fuck they did it because nobody can show me how they did it because it's never been done. It's a fucking lie. So now with that being said, if the Europeans spent so much time thousands of years ago destroying and eradicating the Egyptian language, why would they give it back to you? Somebody answer me that. Why would they give you back a language that they systematically took if white supremacy is factually in place today, which we know it is, why would white people create an Egyptology society which would decode properly and successfully African glyphs and willingly give it to the African community. Somebody tell me. Somebody tell me this. Somebody show me why. So now with that being said, they never did it. This is all a lie created by Jews to justify their burglarization of the African uh, temples and artifacts. So now let's get on brother uh, Dr. York. I mean Prince York and Dr. York. Prince York Foundates all the work of his father. Now we finna go in on both of their ass. First of all, Dr. York never linguistically translated nothing. And you can ask him, if you talk to the man, how did they translate that off the wall? So with that being said, we're dealing with Prince York. And we want to deal with the uh, trust. The, can we trust 
What's in the New Wapians? Can we trust the New Wapian teachings? Let's see. Dr. York, I'm going to throw the book out right now. York, when we're dealing with the New Wapian language, not only are you unable to prove the transliteration of the Egyptian glyphs, because transliteration, not language, literation, okay? It was never meant to be spoken. They added continents and vowels in there in order to speak it. So we know for a fact that whoever claimed they're speaking verbal the verbal and the verbal pr pronunciations of the Egyptian language is offline because it's been misinterpreted and it's predicated off English vowels and you're cre you're speaking something that is of European manifestation and just made the f up, up, just like Christianity It's not of African origin. So not only are you teaching people to to come subscribe to a false teaching which is predicated upon a lie that was created by secret society Europeans. Your f father was a part of a of the goddamn mason. So now. Let's keep it kicking, and uh, let's go on to the next, to the um, to my next subject. We want to go to Islam now. What's wrong with Islam, Pharaoh? Don't do that to Islam. Islam is a branch of Christianity. Now I've already destroyed Christianity enough that I believe I don't have to go in on it. But just in case you don't know, Christianity is a hybrid religion that was created by Illuminati Jews and secret society Jewish members in order to enslave the minds of African people. And it was during the Egyptian Christian period that Coptic text was created to help further plagiarize the alleged translation of the Metanetra, what they're not going to tell you. So all of this alleged translation of the Metanetra took place during what is known as the Egyptian Christian period. Okay? So now let's go on to Islam. Islam is nothing more than remixed Christianity. How? Is Muslims believe in Jesus and they share all the same prophets as people in the Bible, such as Abraham, Moses, etc. Now, why did the Illuminati or, or, or Masonic Jews create Islam. Because what they said was, okay, Africans are getting away from Christianity, but we don't want them to go back to Africa, so we're going to give them Islam. So we're going to give them a sense of nationality, but yet we're going to redirect all of their attention from the continent of Africa and take them to this little piece of land called Mecca. So now you see brothers like Marcus Garvey telling everybody to go to Africa. They kick Marcus Garvey out. Now here comes Noble Jew Ali. So now why is this important? Guess who Noble Jew, Jew Ali was? A man of a mason. Don't believe me? Here's a picture of Noble Jew Ali, and here's a picture of European Jewish Masons, and here's a picture of the, the, of the prince in Europe. They're all holding the same sign, which is their right hand over their heart, and the Noble Jew Ali damn near got on the same garment as these goddamn Masonic members. So now here's the flick. Here you go. Okay, you see that? So now, we know that Islam was imposed on the black community in order to mislead and misdirect. Still don't believe me? Okay. Here's a picture of a here's a picture of Elijah Muhammad with the crescent moon and a star on his hat. And here's a picture of Baphomet, which is used during which is a satanic devil worshiping symbol used by the Illuminati Jews in order to conduct and uh let's say glamorize their wickedness. Now here's a picture of Elijah Muhammad. Okay, y'all see the picture? So we understand that. When we say, damn, Pharaoh, why the black community ain't go nowhere in 30 years? Because you got all these out here that's either consciously or unconsciously not knowing what the fuck they talking about. And they using the Europeans' backing as credentials. What do I mean by that? If you go to college and I'm say, I'm a history professor, okay? I'm a goddamn, I got 14, 15 doctrines of cert cert certification in history. Shit. That don't mean Christopher Columbus discovered America because you graduated from college and got a degree of proving that a lie. So we understand that when you get tested, right? Why do you test something? To see if it's the way you want it to be. When you get in the tub, you test your um, tub water. Why? Because you want to make sure it's the temperature you want it. So if I go to school and on a test, they tell me Christopher Columbus discovered America and I write zero. I mean, I write no, he didn't. I get a zero. I'm, I mean, and I right know he didn't. I'm going to get a zero. Why? Why am I going to fail the test? Because I'm failing the test of successful indoctrination. The European is saying, basically, we didn't successfully indoctrinate this motherfucker. So if you go to school and you go to college and the European tell you, oh, you got all A's in this field of evolution. That means you've successfully been indoctrinated into the flick of lie and the infiltration of white supremacy and what is called science. If you think you have a ball from a monkey, you out your make up mind. If you think that they translated 2,000 glyphs using 15 correct out of 14 incorrect letters, you out your make up mind. 
but you teaching that to people because the European people told you to. If you think that they created sound words and grammatical text out of something that's clearly be, by definition an ideogram, which is something that's not a word, phrase, or language, okay? Then you out your mind oh, if you think they created a spoken language out of a mental construct, okay? So you have people in this community that's teaching they should and can't prove what they're talking to you about, but yet they want you to subscribe to it. And you say, Pharaoh, why ain't nobody going nowhere? Why did why why we not going nowhere? Because uh, 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 is holding on to all they got, which is a motherfucking uh, uh, lie, and they're too egotistical to give it up. So now we're gonna go from Islam and we're gonna go to uh, 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 um the Moors. Let's get on the Moors now. Okay. Moors. First of all, I'm going to throw up a picture of some Illuminati Jews right now with these feathers on. Y'all see the picture, family? Okay. Now let me, let's go to the Moors. Here you go. You see them? First look at the top left picture. Of all these make up for the Moors bowing down to this make up for the European. So now, first before we even get to the bottom right picture of the modern Moors, look at these Moors. Moors help to uphold the self-hating psychological premise of white supremacy. Why? Because all around the world, in ancient texts, as well as up until about the 1700s, when you look at any word that describes the color black, it's always holy, pure, and divine. The European remixed the word black to mean devil, ugly, dirty, and he made the word white, which literally used to mean devil, not and wicked. Now white means holy and pure. So now the Moors want to keep coming on my page telling me, Pharaoh, you misleading the people. Why you keep telling the people that they black? They not black. Why? Why? Now why do the Moors believe this? Because their information Amiga, was founded the thinking up, people upon station. noble Du Ali, who I just showed you was a Mason, and got his psychological understanding from racist ass. Illuminati Jews who passed this knowledge down after conquering Africa and giving it to the black community in order to misguide us. So now they want to teach you that the word black means self-hate and all the negative ish that the Europeans said it mean and they back it up with something that doesn't exist called law. So now why do we want to get on the Moors? We want to say, oh, Pharaoh, the Moors do this. Why the Moors ain't never in the court when somebody go to jail for trying to use that ish? Where was the Moors at for Corinne Games? Where is the Moors at? Whenever I'm sitting up with see a Moor in court on YouTube, he be by his nigga with himself. I don't see 50 Moors in the up with court, okay? So with that being said, what is y'all, what is they doing? For the, what is they doing for black people? Besides teaching us that black means something negative and teaching us sovereignty and sovereign law which I don't totally disagree with, but now we have to go into the origin of sovereignty. What did the Moors do to get sovereignty? They agreed to help the European carry out his wickedness in exchange for sovereignty. So how was Moors the only black <laughs> over here during slavery not getting fucked up? When you see pictures of George Washington, who we know for a fact has slaves, and you see that little African man, sometimes as a teenager, sometimes as an adult, and he got the, the burgundy turban on in the background, why he don't look like the rest of the black slaves? That's because he was a Moor. And in exchange to not get uh, off, to exchange to not get enslaved, to get whipped, and to get subjugated to everything that we were uh, objectified to, they were given sovereignty in exchange for their information. So when you hear people say Moors are the biggest of traders in history, this is why. When Christopher Columbus came the fuck over here, guess who the fuck was on his up with boat? Teaching him how to circum circumnavigate the seas. A make up with a Moor. So with that being said, they want to tell you black people that we're Moors. We not know make up Moors. A Moor is a group of people in past history that sold the fuck out and helped the Europeans. And now today, they try to mix updated information with their past Masonic information that was passed down through Noble Jew Ali. Now, am I saying that all Moors are bad individually? No. I'm not attacking individuals. I'm attacking the foundation of the group, just like Black Lives Matter. Am I saying every Muslim out there in Black Lives Matter is bad? No. But what I'm saying is Black Lives Matter was created by a Jew Illuminati member named George Soros who's funding them. So now when we look at the black community... All these little in the community is getting a ish passed down to them by Jewish Illuminati members. I'm a rock squad is dealing with the alleged translation and the teachings of the Meta Netra, the Egyptology Society who prescribed to have done this, were all 
secret society members and racist ass Europeans who predicate their alleged translation of the meta nature upon Philippus, which is somebody who doesn't exist. Again, the Amara Squad propagate the alleged existence of the evolution theory. Evolution theory, once again created by secret society European members who are racist as hell, and the evolution theory is predicated upon a common ancestor that doesn't exist and can't be found either. All these Christians out here want to believe in the Bible, which was allegedly written and has the words contained in it by somebody who doesn't exist and can't be found either. Muslims got their information not just from Elijah Muhammad and uh, brothers like, I mean, other, other wicked Muslims like Farrakhan, but they teach you to believe in somebody like Allah who doesn't exist and can't be found. And they teach you to believe in a book that was written by somebody named Muhammad who was literally documented to have been illiterate and not even been able to read or write. So they want you to believe in a book that you can't prove was ever written or writ, writ or was able to be, that he was able to, ever even able to read this book in order to write it and interpret the words of God allegedly. So now what does all these organizations have in common that I just named? They all want you to subscribe to some shit that none of them themselves can prove and their information was passed down to them by someone involved in a secret society created by Europeans that is found dated on white supremacy and black oppression. So every last one of them is in the black community teaching information given to them from white racist who wish to suppress us and they are upholding this shit in the black community. So when you say what's wrong with the black community, the black community still has not began to think for itself. We still uphold for the white lies and fight harder for the white lies than the white man do his mother self. The white man has already debunked the evolution theory. So why are we still teaching that ish? The white man has already admitted that they have not successfully translated the meta nature. Don't believe me? Not only as it, not only is the Demetic text 40, 45 to 50% incorrect, but on August 23rd, 2016, 2016, Europeans released an article stating for the first time ever meta nature can be read in English. This is, that was just damn near two weeks ago from the today of this video. So with that being said, if the white man is saying the meta nature can just now be translated from two weeks ago, what the fuck y'all so-called teaching all these years? That's just like when McDonald's say, oh, now chicken nuggets with new white meat. Motherfucker, the meat been white. So what the fuck been eating all these years? So nobody knows what they're talking about and nobody can prove anything that they're asking you to give a piece of your life and your money to, but yet they want to uphold it as truth because it's all they know because they even they either are consciously or unconsciously misinforming you. So with that being said, I'm going in on everybody who ever tried to come for me and I'm letting it be known I'm putting the them lights out. So if anybody want to respond to this video, if anybody want to have a get back to this video, come with the facts like I did, okay? If you are part of the Amara Squad, show and prove how the Meta Nature was translated off the wall step by step. Show and prove how 2,000 Egyptian hieroglyphic characters were translated only using 29, to which out of that 29, only 14 were, uh, I mean only 15 were correct. So show and prove how 15 characters were used to translate 2,000. You can't up and do it, okay? And I don't even got to go in on the rest of that. I don't even got to go in because you can't do that alone, okay? New opulence. Nobody wants to, nobody wants to deal with Malachi's New York. We know what he did. So with that being said, we understand that his psychological premise can be tainted. So now why would I subscribe to that? Why do y'all keep asking me to subscribe to that? I don't want to subscribe to that. So you can get out of my inbox asking me to subscribe to that. Sure. Moors, you can stop writing me and coming for me, talking about some why am I misleading people, telling people that we're black when I'm cursing my people, when every culture before white people considered the word black as something holy. Only you and white people consider it as something negative. So who's misleading who? Who's really pseudo? Who's really full of shit? Who's really not doing research? All of these organizations I just showed you step by step were founded by the them involved, involved in occultism. Just like these rappers are involved in occultism. Matter of fact, I'm finna show you two rappers right now. Involved in occultism. You see P. Diddy and you see Young Thug. P. Diddy got a Morris Fez on, but we know damn well he not no more. We know for a fact P. Diddy is a part of Illuminati. 
How the fuck got a fez on with a Christian cross? So this shows that they're trying to create confusion. Now you see rapper Young Thug to the right. We all know he's gay. He got an unk on. Why? Because in this damn time, Europeans know that youth such as my age are not subscribing to this shit that they put here in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Such as the Moore Science Temple, being a Muslim, being a Christian, being a Hebrew, I'm a right evolution theory. We're not subscribing to that shit. So they know we're going back to what we can identify with this commit. So now they want to mislead us and you see all these rappers, now they're wearing unks. So understand the white man is always putting false information out here in order to mislead the youth. Not the them elders, and once the youth is successfully misled, they become elders who now wish to mislead the youth predicated upon what they think they know. And this is what y'all see me going through right now. <coughs> can't answer my questions. They want to slander me and try to say, oh, they can't get with my information or the reason, they, the reason my questions are not plausible is because of my age, not because of facts. So with that being said, exactly what I'm saying, you can see with your own two eyes. All these out here are victims of miseducation provided by the European and they all out here teaching ish that they cannot prove and don't nobody factually know what they can prove and now allowing each other to teach ish that they themselves have not factually come to a standpoint with as being existing. Nobody in the Amara squad can show you how the meta nature was translated yet they'll allow each other to teach that ish and they'll charge you to learn it. And then them got the nerve to offer me, ask me do I want to learn it. If you don't even know it. So now with that being said, now we go to the Nuwapians. They want to teach you the Nuwapic language when the Metanetra was never translated in the first place and is not meant to be spoken and the fact vowels was put in there is illegal as hell and they created a hybrid language that's to be spoken that never existed. So now you try to charge the little them, get them to join a nation and become a part of something that was established by a Masonic pedophile who I'm not slandering, I'm showing documentation to prove my, my little them of findings. And what I'm calling him a pedophile, okay? You want people to subscribe to a Masonic pedophile who didn't even know where the physical knowledge came from, okay? And then the Moors want people to subscribe to some issue that was created in order to sell out their own people and help the European advance his racist ass agenda in exchange for them not to win us legally. So all y'all full of shit. And like I said, I'm slitting throats. I'm not coming for nobody. I never come for nobody. But everybody seems to want to come for me. So now, hopefully, after this video, anybody know when they come, I'm going to bury the fuck out you. It's not no more mercy. It's not no more humble. It's not none of that shit. Because little fums ain't humble with me. And little fums never had love or came to me with love or genuineness like I did from day one. So with that being said, family, don't nobody out here know what the fuck they talking about. Little fums might respond to this video egotistically. They might have some flies to say. But I bet you ain't nobody going to fully successfully prove their doctrine predicated upon its origins. All they going to do is say, this is right because somebody else said so. This is right because somebody else said so. This is right because so-and-so said so. So nobody's going to say this is how they did it and this is where they got it from. I don't want to hear about what Nick, uh, uh, what you call it, a white man said about evolution. Show me how it was done. If you can't show me, then you shouldn't be up teaching it and charging people to know it. I don't want to hear about what the white man said about the translitigation of the hieroglyphics. Show me how the up was done. If you can't show it, I don't want to up care about it. I don't want to hear about uh, how Malachi New York created a goddamn language. If he can't show me step by step how the metanetra was translated and how it's even uh, plausible for him to be speaking something that's not even words, I don't want to hear what he got to say. So with that being said, when it comes to the Moors, if the Moors ain't in the courtroom getting up with them out of jail and when they in some issues, the police help them up with them, I don't want to hear nothing about them being a Moor. So when we want to hear about for the last 30, 40 years, why the black community... Been this is the OmegaRadio.co.uk so me I say, Amiga, you know you are the leader. Amiga, you're the thinking people station.